In this video, we are going to see how to convert an ADL file into Excel. So what is an ADL file? It's an edit decision list file, which is typically exported and imported in video editing applications. I have a timeline here in uh, Premiere Pro sequence. I've exported the sequence as an ADL file. The output looks somewhat like this. The first few lines are a uh, header information and then for every item in the timeline, every asset, you will have two rows. Now I want to convert this into something simpler like this. In this case, I have only taken the asset name and the timeline start and end time, but the method remains the same even if you wanted some additional columns. So what are the columns available in the ideal file? Well, it looks complex, but it is not. For every row, we have First, the clip name here, and then the type of edit, which could be cut or transition, and then the in and out point in the source video, and the start and end point in the timeline. So that's how it works. Now, how do we go about doing it? Well, there are two ways of doing it. One is in Excel, one is in Power BI. The method which is used in Excel is exactly the same in Power BI, but in Power BI, we have a new and much more intelligent and faster way of doing it. So first I'm going to show you that and then I will show you the common method. So this is Power BI. You can download Power BI desktop. Go to powerbi.com, register, download Power BI desktop. It's completely free. Go to get data, text CSV and we will choose our EDL file. By default it shows TXT CSV. All files will show us our file. Now, having done that, it will show us what is available. And generally, you will go to transform data and then clean up the file. But here, because it's Power BI, we have this very powerful feature called extract using examples. What does that mean? Well, it shows you the data like this. On top is the raw data and it is asking you, what do you want? Give some examples and then it will figure it out. It's really powerful. So what I'm going to do is just copy the first sensible row I want, double click here and paste it. As soon as I do that, it is giving you various options of what I really want. And somehow it has actually combined the second row with the first row, which is great. So I choose this and make sure you press enter. And then somehow it does the whole thing automatically. Now it has combined it. It's still not job done, but at least that combining first row with second row, removing the empty row, all that is done. So now I'll show you what happens next. When you click on transform data, this combined version is now with us. Now we have to split columns and get what columns we want. So from here onwards, the method is same, whether you do it in Excel or Power BI, but this feature is unique to Power BI. So this part I have shown to you in Power BI. Now I'm going to show you the same thing, how to do it in Excel. And remember the same method works in Power BI as well. So I'm going to close this. We don't want this to be uploaded right now. Discard changes and let's go to Excel. In Excel, I have a blank file. Again, the method is same data, get data, from file text CSV. If you don't see this menu get and transform, that means you have an older version. You'll have to install the power query add-in to get this. Anyway, same process. So far choose sample ADL, but this time you will see there is the from example option is missing. So we have to combine those two rows using some extra steps, but even those are quite powerful and fast. Now this is what the data is. It's basically the same file as it is. Nothing has changed so far. I'm going to get rid of this thing. It's called column profile, column distribution and column quality. We don't need that right now. Now, first of all, I want to get rid of the three rows because they are not really required. So you go to the home tab and say remove top rows. Then it'll ask you, okay, how many top rows do you want to remove? Three. All right. Now, whatever we do are steps which are automatically recorded here. In case you made a mistake, you can remove the step and do it again. 
Now the next thing is we'll get rid of these blank rows. How do you do that? Click on one of the cells, not the row, the cell. Right click and say, only keep things which don't look like this. Okay. Now the tougher problem. How do you combine this with this? In Excel, you could have put a formula equal to, but this doesn't work like this. So we want to give a number. This number is given here, but we want a number as a column. So how do you give numbers? You say add column and serial numbers are called index column. Yes, we want to start with one. This is the index column. Now what we really want is the same number for the rows we want to merge. So this should be one, one, this should be three, three, five, five, whatever the number, it should be same for both. How do we do that? In order to do that, because currently we are combining two rows, we will take the mod of the index number. So if there are two rows to be combined, we'll take mod of two. Mod means what? Take the number divided by two and show me the remainder, right? If there is no remainder, that means it's even, otherwise it's odd. If it was three rows to be combined, we would have done mod of three. So let me show you first. I'm going to add a custom column and we will call it new index. And this time I'm just going to use the mod function. So mod function is available not just as a mod function, it is number dot and then you have lots of functions. So if you actually scroll through all the functions, we'll see number dot mod. Okay. And mod means something divided by something. Something means what the index column itself, whatever is the number divided by two. And what will this give us? We will see. This is an intermediate step. So notice this is giving me one and this is giving me zero. Three is giving me one because if you divide three by two, what is remaining is one. And if we divide it by four by two, nothing is remaining. So now we don't want just one zero one zero. If something is remaining, what do we want? We want the original number. So here we want three, here we want five. And if nothing is remaining, we don't want anything for now. Okay, so let's modify. So how do you modify? Click on the wheel. So we'll just put if function here. So it's a if number, whatever this is returning me zero, right? If this is returning zero, what does that mean? The second row, the fourth row, those kind of rows. Then I want nothing. So you call it null. Null means nothing. Else, I want whatever is the index number. Okay, so square bracket will give me columns available, index number. No syntax errors, okay. So now we got one null, three null, very good. But actually I want one, one, three, three, five, five, seven, seven. That is easy. You right click on the column and say fill down. It just does the job beautifully. Now I don't need this index column, so let's get rid of it. Now the important part. I want to group by this. So these two rows should become one and then in the process we'll combine these two texts. So I'm going to use a group by operation. Go to the home tab and say group by. Now of course we want to group by the index and whatever you create afterwards, we'll call it the output column for now. Now I can use any of these functions. Actually with none of these we want. But what we really want is a function which will combine the values. It's like append or concatenate, this plus this or ampersand, that kind of thing. But for now, that function doesn't exist. So we'll just put sum. Sum of what? Whatever is in column one. That's not going to work. It'll give me an error. So don't worry. But what we are now interested in is this function. Now, what is it going to create? The output column. So, so far this is good. Now, when it is creating the output column for index one, we have two rows. For index three, we have two rows. So for each row, we want to do something. What do we want to do? Not just sum because it's not going to work. We want to combine the text. So we have text dot combine. Now, what does text dot combine do? 
whatever is in column one and now we have two rows there so we'll have actually two pieces of text it is going to combine them but what should be there in between the two pieces of text well we'll put some character it could be comma hyphen hash whatever but we'll put a rare character like this now this is good but we don't want this type nullable text at all that's all we want to do and let's see if it works let's see what happened it actually did combine and put tilde in between great that's what we wanted now remember in power bi by example up to here it had already done that's why i showed you that method anyway we don't need this index column get rid of it and now we are at the same stage as we were earlier so now only re what remains is you get whatever column you need by extracting pieces from this combined text now how do we do that multiple methods so i'll show you a couple of methods the simplest method will be split the text by space wherever the space is and then keep the columns you want and delete the ones you don't want but just for variation i'm going to show you two methods of doing it so let's do one thing first let's get this now remember before every asset id there is a colon so this is like split operation at colon so by delimiter which is the colon but right now if i do it notice there are so many colons we don't want them we want only the rightmost so only one colon start looking up for at the colon from right side when you encounter it split it here that's it so now it does only in two columns and this is what we want so we'll call it asset and we want this to be in the beginning so just drag drop so that's one way of doing it the other way would be split this that also i'll show you by space this time not colon space now the problem is there are look at this this is not one space there are many many spaces so you will get lots of columns now 31 columns and then you'll have to keep clicking on the columns you don't want and then deleting them so although this works if you want only few items from here this is not the ideal thing for example in my case i only want the timeline start point and timeline end point that's it i already got the asset name oh then what do i do there is a better way so i select this because this is the input column from which we will create the output and then what do we want to do we want to add a column by giving an example example will be in the context of the selected column okay so it adds another column here and says what do you want all right so actually i want this 0080201 i can't really copy from here so i click on the first row and now it shows me the details so from here i am going to copy and i'll just double click and paste i'll get rid of the space so i give an example to power query saying this is what i have got this is what i want and press enter it's intelligent enough to figure it out done so now i got this so i'll say end time code done so i got one more i'll keep it aside and like this i can keep on identifying what i want so i'm just going to do one more to get this 0000425 i'm not going to show you how to do it because you already know i'm going to speed this up and that's it assuming you have finished extracting all the columns you can remove this and now you have the data once you do this you can say close and load in case of excel the data will come here and in case of uh, power bi it will go into the data model there you right click and say copy table and paste it wherever you want so that is how 
you can convert EDL into Excel table. That's it for now. I'm sure you found this useful. So subscribe and share it with others who you think will benefit from it. That's it. See you next time. Take care.